video games have the unique ability to bring people together, and the developers of Karma Zoo have a great understanding of that fact. I've never played a game quite like this one, but is it a soaring eagle flying brilliantly through the skies, or is Karma Zoo a big heaping pile of elephant poop? Let's find out in our full review. Real quick, you know what really stinks? The echo chambers of gaming. Support independent content at patreon.com slash idreamofindiegames and you'll gain Discord access, exclusive live streams, early ad-free shows, a new podcast, and so much more. Your community is waiting for you. Karma Zoo is a game about teamwork and compassion. You'll work together in a group of up to 10 animals, entities, and inanimate objects like a pear or a teapot, platforming your way through perilous situations and earning good karma for your many deeds and sacrifices along the way. It's a 2D platformer at its heart with some light puzzle-solving mechanics. The game is broken up into two main modes, Loop, which is the heart and soul of the experience, and Totem, which is more of a local party game mode, though it can also be enjoyed online. Unfortunately, the Loop mode has to be played online at the time of this review, but with good reason. The entire point of the game is to do good deeds and gather karma between total strangers. Loop mode takes competition out of the equation entirely, focusing on what you can do to help your fellow player instead of how you can get yourself ahead. If doing good deeds out of the kindness of your heart doesn't motivate you, then the plethora of unlockables certainly should. As you earn karma by sacrificing yourself on spikes, opening doors for your friends, or other means, you'll use that karma to both unlock new abilities and new animals in the game's sanctuary, which acts as your main hub. The karma you've collected can be spent in any order you wish, with every new creature having its own unique set of abilities and adorable dances that you can unlock. As an example, the pear can float in the air longer with a little leaf propeller, and the armadillo isn't susceptible to spikes. I love the variety between all the different characters, and how they sing in different voices is the adorable icing on the cake. Not only do you work together with the folks you happen upon online, but the entire world's collective karma, or at least everyone playing this game, goes towards the karma pass. This is not like your average battle pass, as it's built into the game without an additional cost. Rather, it is the total amount of karma gathered through the entire community, which goes towards unlocking even more fun. Once you are dropped into a loop, you'll choose a bonus card, with more being available depending on how much fruit you collect. There is a set amount of fruit in each level, so the more you gather, the more perks you'll potentially carry forward. Forward. These perks range from the ability to perform higher jumps, to even turning everyone into an elephant. My personal favorite was when we turned all of the fruit into pizza, but that's just the Italian food lover in me. Karma Zoo is truly about sticking together in the literal sense. Your characters also have a halo around them, think like that episode of Seinfeld with the bubble boy, or that terrible movie, and the size of your aura will increase the more you stick together. Should you drift too far apart from one another, your bubble will shrink and you'll eventually die. So yes, death doesn't come from the actual dangers within the levels, it comes from drifting apart, though you can fly around as a ghost slime should you die and still help your party by leading them in the right direction. This is truly a unique mechanic all around that works to surprising effect. It's also worth noting that levels are timed, and while I usually hate timers in games, they're pretty lenient in Karma Zoo, and never felt like they were that much of an issue. Levels adapt to how many players are on screen, along with which characters you're using, so no run will ever feel quite the same, adding almost infinite replayability to the game. Still, in the unfortunate event that the game doesn't find success, the loop mode could potentially die off, which is really quite a shame. It is a mode that will quite literally live or die by its audience right now, which is kind of poetic when you think about it. Your good karma is going to be what feeds this game, and there is something poignant about that. Thankfully, when it comes to totem mode, local play will always be an option. Here you take part in four different types of minigames that showcase the only competitive spirit Karma Zoo has to offer. There is a treacherous race to the finish line, Eat, which has you trying to consume more fruit than your opponents, a descent which is more of a race to the bottom, and a mode where you have to light more torches than everyone else. All of these modes were surprisingly fun, almost reminding me of a more fleshed out Mario Party minigame with the addictive simplicity of something like 2015's Duck Game. We were only able to experience three players for the review throughout every mode, but having previously played the demo, it's obvious that the more players, the more chaos and subsequent fun will ensue. Oh shit. Karma Zoo's visual presentation is pleasantly different. 
It does have a bit of a dark neon vibe using a charming pixel art style. The worlds themselves are appealing to look at, and the animations of whichever character you're controlling are all very well done. The game oozes with charm, and there is a soothing nature to its simplicity. Despite having the potential for so many players at once, Karmazoo doesn't feel all that chaotic or cluttered. I also really enjoyed the music and sound effects. <laughs> The tracks are rich with bossa nova beats, heavily bass driven, and a little bit bonkers. The game sounds like something created on a Casio keyboard in the late 80s, early 90s. I also loved subtle touches such as an announcer that will enunciate words that you highlight differently each time, which just further adds to the charm. All told, Karmazoo looks and sounds downright adorable. There really isn't all that much bad to say about Karmazoo, except for the fact that it is going to need players. This is a bit of a risky proposition for the developer, but the game is coming in at a very low price tag, and I personally think it's going to find an audience. That said, this is not a game for everyone. If you crave precision platforming and don't like working with others, Karmazoo won't appeal to you, but if you enjoy the idea of people coming together from all walks of life to better the world, it's a game that will stimulate your senses and warm your heart. Karmazoo is the perfect game for those intimidated by the stereotypical online gaming experience. There is no mean-spirited, angry gamer culture to be found here at all. This is a game that reminds me of the power and creativity within the indie scene. I am awarding Karmazoo the golden genie lamp of approval. There's just nothing quite like it, and we need more risk takers instead of developers making the same game over and over again. Even if the loop mode does somehow die off, I can see myself hosting many a party night with the totem mode. Karmazoo is exceptional in its creativity and compassion.